Yes, it is April Fool's video, however, you're not going to be lied to, misled, or anything like it. Hey guys, today I'd like to take the opportunity and instead of lying to you, I decided to do something new. I wanted to do a piece about ChatGPT because what kind of website would I be if I didn't even attempt to cover that technology? After all, everyone out there is trying to convince you that AI is after your job. Am I scared? I am not, for two main reasons. The first and most important reason is that I am my own boss, and that's not going to change anytime soon. ChatGPT4 already exists with ChatGPT5 around the corner and no one, absolutely no one goes to ChatGPT website to generate a review or project and read that instead. You all flock into channels like mine, no better. But now since we've got this straight, let's try something new. Everyone out there is worrying which job's gonna be for the grabs and while definitely impressive, ChatGPT is not going to take those jobs marked by journalists as endangered because at core it is a language model. It's not even a search engine even though Microsoft insists that this is what they're going to do with it. To back up my statement and help you illustrate how perfect and imperfect ChatGPT by B, I've set up an experiment in which I'm going to review a product. But first, I'm going to need a product, something that has been released after 2019, so ChatGPT didn't have that product for the training data and cannot use existing reviews for that product uh, to have a head start. I've been meaning to review this Aromax Pro Precision Screwdriver, or Automatic Precision Screwdriver, and it'll give me a perfect opportunity to do so. And I'm going to review it three times in this video, and here is what's gonna happen. First, I'm going to write the review myself. It's gonna be slightly shorter than usual, because I don't want you to sit in there for 10 minutes listening to the same review three times just to compare between each other. I'm, I'm not that evil. I'll have a free reign of actually testing the product, outlining everything that is good or bad about it, and I'll produce a review. For the second version of the review, I'm going to submit product details available on the product page of uh, AliExpress listing to the chat GPT as a context information. And to make it slightly more interesting, I'm also going to supply the list of pros and cons about the product that I already covered. After all, the chat GPT is not going to be aware of the quality of the product, so it would be unfair to expect um, the chat to know that, right? And the last review I'm going to produce, it's going to be the one I've written myself, but I'm going to use ChatGPT to improve upon and see what kind of changes it would apply to my review to make it better. Obviously, the final effect is going to be still moderated by me, and I am going to pick the changes that ChatGPT will try to introduce. That sounds quite interesting. Hey there, this is Matt from Not Enough Tech and I have the chance to try new Aromax Pro electronic precision screwdriver and here is why I think about it. Firstly, the product is small and precise power is certainly a plus point. The OLED screen and fine operation makes it easy to use and while 200 RPMs per minute rotation speed provides a powerful performance and high work efficiency. Additionally, its lightweight design makes it portable, which is always a plus. However, there are some cons that I have to mention. The speed of the screwdriver is quite low, which can be frustrating when you need to work quickly. Also, the selection of bits included in the set is not very useful. I found myself having to use my own bits most of the time. Finally, I found out that the button on the screwdriver is oriented too high, which makes it awkward to use. On the positive side, the screwdriver circle arc surface design, it's a nice feature. It makes it easy to control the screwdriver during the work and the grip is more comfortable even for those with uh, arthritic hands.
<laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. I also appreciate four adjustable torque and dual mode options, which can meet your requirements uh, of tightening or loosening the screw bits. The set includes 34 different types of bits, which is certainly a plus point. It makes the power screwdriver versatile enough to assemble and disassemble most of the 3C products, like laptops for access on mount machines, glasses, clocks, toys and models, making it very suitable for people who like electronic equipment. Finally, the long-lasting battery is another plus point. The 500mAh battery can tighten a total of 900 screws and the USB Type-C port is convenient for you to charge at any time. In conclusion, while there are some cons to the Aromax Pro electronic precision screwdriver, such as the low speed and limited selection of bits, its circle arc design, uh, adjustable torque and long-lasting battery life makes it a solid choice for those in need of the precision screwdriver. I bought Aromax Pro after unfortunately over-torquing two of my beloved Miniware ES15 screwdrivers. As it was my fault, I decided to get a new precision screwdriver so I can get at least a review out of it before I try manhandling it again at Industrial Robots, which, which was a bad idea. It is shipped in a cool aluminium case that stores 34 included bits, magnetizer and obviously the driver itself. That's already a plus because ES15 comes as bare as it gets, it literally has nothing. To keep all the bits inside the case has a magnetic strip which is a stroke of genius as the bits are easy to remove and place back again. Thanks to the non-circle profile, it doesn't just roll on the table and the included OLED display, motion activation and the LED light puts it on the same league as my previous tool. With four different gears I can torque it up to 2 kg newtons, which is impressive considering how light the design is. It's good enough to tackle repairs of most of electronics, in short, good enough for machine bolts and uh, not so good for anything else. OLED display allows settings for the manual or wrist activation motion and it could come in handy when you have like 50 screws to us and uh, you're tired of twisting your wrist back and forth. However, I wouldn't go back to manual activation ever again as motion control screwing is just too much fun. I mean, after all, screwing things in and out isn't particularly fun, but Taro Max Pro brings the fun aspect uh, of interacting with Raspberry Pi, Arduino and similar electronic kits. It's been years since I got my first motion-driven screwdriver and the novelty hasn't wore off and you could see me using it and assembling it in various kits in my live stream or videos. And as much as I like this thing, there are things to improve. Aromax Pro boasts 200 RPMs, but for me it's a massive slowdown. After all, ES15 had 470 RPMs. You'll take longer to tackle some screws. I'll also miss the impact driver function. I don't consider my workflow to be wildly different from the general population, so the included bits bother me a little. I have way too many exotic bits and not enough the uh, typical ends like hex, phillips, heads, etc. Without it, I cannot really turn this tool into the ultimate repair friend. Uh, you probably need to assemble your own set based on your requirements. In conclusion, I wasn't really sure if I'm going to like Aromax Pro, but the 30 to 40 US dollars price mark is a half of the price of ES15. It does the job almost as well as the other one, and the battery lasts what it seems forever. All those saved dollars are worth the speed sacrifice and the trouble of creating your own bit set. So if you're looking for a treat to yourself or give a perfect gift to a maker under $40, then anyone interested to just check out the description below. I purchased the Aromax Pro after an unfortunate incident uh, of overtorquing my miniware ES15 screwdriver. Since it was my fault, I decided to get a new precision electronic screwdriver and write a review about it before attempting to handle industrial robot with it again. 
because it's gonna happen. It comes shipped in a sleek aluminium case that stored 34 included bits, a magnetizer and the driver itself. This is already a plus compared to ES15 which came with nothing but bare essentials. The magnetic strip inside the case its a stroke of genius. It keeps all the bits in place making it easy to remove them and put them back again. Thanks to non circle profile the Aromax Pro doesn't roll off the table and the small OLED display, motion activation and LED light put it in the same league as my previous tool. With four different gears you can torque it up to 2kg newtons which is impressive considering uh, its fairly light design. It's good enough to handle the repairs of most of electronics but not suitable for anything else. The OLED display allows you to set gearing and manual or um, wrist motion activation. This could come in handy if you've got 50 different screws to tighten and you are tired of twisting your wrist. However, I wouldn't go back to manual activation again as motion control screwdriving is too much fun. One thing that bothered me were the included bits. While they might be suitable for the general population, I have too many exotic bits in there and not enough typical ones, such as hex sizes and Philips heads. To turn this tool into an ultimate repair friend, you'll need to assemble your own set of um, suiting your specific requirements. The Arrow Max Pro boasts 200 RPMs, but for me it's a massive slowdown from the ES15's 470 RPMs. It takes longer to tackle screws and I miss the impact driver function. In conclusion, I wasn't sure if I would like Aromax Pro, but at the $30 to $40 mark, it's half the price of the ES15, it does the job almost as well and the battery lasts what it seems like forever. The saved dollars are worth of speed sacrifice and the trouble of assembling your own palette of bits. So if you are looking to treat yourself or give a perfect gift under $40 to anyone interested in making electronics, the Arrow Pro Max is a winner. Now that you've heard all three, tell me which review had the biggest impact on you, which review has swayed your opinion and caused you to get interested in the product or convince you either to buy it or completely forget the idea because it's not for you. I'm really curious to hear what do you think about it. And while you're writing this in the comments, just take a moment to listen to my take on ChatGPT and similar AI tools that are being right now developed and used to create text, images, and probably soon enough videos. While I'm going to focus on ChatGPT in particular, I think the broad strokes of my thoughts can be applied to tools like Midjourney or whatever AI tools will come next. At the moment, ChatGPT is excellent as a language model. It's unprecedented and it's something that we haven't seen deployed to that scale. And as a language model, it's capable of predicting quite interesting conversations. However, it's not quite there when it comes to capturing the essence and the context of generated content. Each output generated by ChatGPT feels subdued even when forced to express an emotion. And I'm not talking about stuff like opinion bias, which was covered already in the World Wide Web. However, I'm talking about the small nuisances that only humans can pick up on. To me, looking at the review generated by AI feels very clinical and devoid of purpose. You almost feel like a bad PR copy. It becomes painfully obvious when I'm trying to actually read it out loud and despite my best acting efforts, it just feels so awkward to say these words out loud and pretend that I was the author of them. And even when used with a prompt make it in a style of, I don't see it really capturing the style of that person. It will generate the grammar and language used by that person, but it's not going to replicate how that person behaves, that's for sure. And yes, sure, I can use ChatGPT to generate a review in a style of X or Y, but why? That person already exists and other than valiantly copying that person or trying to capitalize on their existence, I generally don't see a purpose for this. It's like making a crappy version of Coca-Cola creating yet another Ray-Ban's knockoff. 
or even better, writing a very fake Amazon review really, really quickly. As much fun as it is to use ChatGPT, Midjourney, or similar AI-powered application to generate the content, the future of AI generations is a little bit scary. And it's not because it's going to take your job. AI, it's not going to take your job. But the people who are going to use those AI tools to manipulate text, images and videos to create their own version of reality definitely will have the impact on your life. Right now, it may seem easy to you to spot the difference between a real thing or AI-generated art, text or video. However, this world is already full of examples how uh, Internet lies has shaped the political landscape of our world, not exactly for the better. And that was way before bad players had access to sophisticated tool to AI-powered text and image generation. For me, ChatGPT is the McDonald's of the food industry. We all go there when we trap between a rock and four-hour drive on the motorway, and yeah, it does the job at fending of starvation. Consuming a bland, extra-large meal that looks nothing like the picture on the paywall may fend off the hunger for a while, but deep inside we all dream about a better culinary future for ourselves. I mean, even a simple homemade sandwich would outperform this meal in nutrition, cost and pretty much everything else. So next time you find yourself around Marquis, it's on you. Do yourself a favor, plan ahead, save some money and make a sandwich at home. And the money saved, you can spend on this really cool screwdriver from Aromax Pro. Whether are we doomed or not, one thing is for sure, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to know what's next, then hey, you know how YouTube works, I don't have to explain you all that. If you want to join me in a conversation, there are social links listed down below right now, so feel free to reach out and start the conversation going. As for now, thanks so much for watching, happy April's Fool's Day, and back to regular content from myself next week. Bye!